Ciao friends and welcome to a new unplugged video from SQL BI. In this video, I want to answer a question that appeared on one of our forums. Vanessa asked a way to place a filter on one table based on the existence of rows in a different table. That's an interesting question because you can solve it in multiple ways. Uh, you can use expanded tables, that is the simplest way of solving it, but that comes with some uh, issues and some details that are worth investigating. So, I don't want to spend time with the introduction. With no further ado, let's look at the question and then we solve it together. The question appeared on uh, Budgeting with Power BI, a video that I created uh, a few months ago about how to create a budget. But among the comments, uh, the last one is Vanessa asking for something different. She said, I have a similar but different problem, as always, uh, a lot of details, but the thing is, uh, I want to filter a measure in the sales pack where there is a target in the target table. So we do have two tables, target and sales, and I want to filter sales based on the presence of rows in the target table. And she tried to calculate sales amount target, but this didn't work. So let's take a look at her model and then we understand first the solution that she provided and then why that solution is suboptimal. Let's take a look at the model. I have it already open here. There is again the description of the description, but basically it's all here. I want to return the sales amount where there is a target. Let's take a look at the model together. We do have a target table and the sales table. They both are fact tables. And then we have customer, product, and data. I want to show sales only if there is a row for the combination of customer and product in target. It's important to know that target is linked to sales through three dimensions, customer, product, and data. And in her requirement, let me see it again, uh, the target is set against the product and the customer. So we are not going to use the date table. Now let me explain this a bit with uh, the whiteboard. So I just need to take a shift alt s a screenshot of the part that I'm interested in looking at, this part, and then we look at that with the whiteboard. This is the scenario. We have a target here and we have sales here. The requirement is to move the filter from target to sales, but not using all the tables. We want to use only customer and product. Now, this can be solved quite easily if you were using expanded tables. But the problem is uh, the expansion of target goes to customer, to product, and then to date. So the target expanded table contains uh, all the row, all the columns from uh, customer, product, and data. And that's not what Vanessa is trying to accomplish. What she wants to do is a different thing. She wants to start from target, go only to customer, then to product, build the combinations of customer and product that exist inside target, and then use this part, let me show this part as a filter to go over sales. So that requires creating a table containing the combinations of customer and product only. Now let's take a look at how she solved the problem. Because we already have the solution. Uh, it's here, but it's rather small. So let me duplicate this page. We get rid of the description. Uh, that doesn't look so simple. Okay, and then we enlarge this table a bit. Oh, come on. And finally, I also need to increase the font, which is not so simple. Let's increase that to, let's say, 17. And resize that a bit. I love Power BI when it's not that easy to accomplish simple things. 
Come on. Okay. That is the report that contains the outlet, the retail SQ. Now, outlet comes from the customer table. The raw data contains the retail SQ. And we have the sales value, the sales we target, and the target percentage. The target percentage basically tells us whether we want to show the row or not. So we want to show the sales only if there is a target. So sales we target is the measure that is interesting to us. Let me get rid of sales value and target because um, that's not what I want to see. So go back here and let's get rid of sales value and target. Now we only have sales we target. Let's take a look at the code. That's rather complex. And probably it's better if we move it to Duck Studio so we can enlarge the font a bit. Okay, here we are. Let me place it on the right monitor and then we take a look at the code. We define a variable TBL and then we return TBL. As much as I love variables, we can get rid of it because uh, that's basically useless. So the sales we target does this job. It computes the sales value applying a filter. And this filter has two filters and then add columns. It cross joins uh, the retail SQ and the product custom and the customer customer key. So it builds a temporary table containing all the combinations or the visible combinations of retail SQ and customer key using a cross join. Let me take a look at the model. So it analyzes customer, it analyzes product, gathers all the values of the product SQ, all the product of the customer, customer, all the values of customer, customer key. Then we build the cross join. It computes both the target and the sales value. Now target is a measure, I guess, let me see where target is. Here it is. Let's add the definition. Not here, but here. Target basically computes the, the sum of target. So there's nothing fancy to see here. And sales value, that is the other measure, contains the sum of sales value. So basically, these are just two sums. It computes the target, it computes the sales value, and then it filters out all the rows where there are no sales and when there is no target. If that is the situ if that is uh, the correct scenario, this table returns uh, the product retail, the retail SQ, the customer key, the target, and the sales value, and it is used as a filter in calculate table. Now let me show you the content of this table. We can do that. Uh, well, we can do that here just by using evaluate, and we run it. The result of <clears throat> this table contains uh, the product key, the customer key, the target, and then the sales amount. Let's make it a bit simpler because uh, the measure works by finding all the combination of product and customer where we do have a target. Uh, we are going to make it simpler later. For now, let's grab uh, the original query so we also have an idea about the performance of the different solutions that we are going to implement. I'm just going to save this for later. Let me create a new query here. And then in the original one, I'm going to grab a query from uh, Power BI. So I want to grab the same query that is executed here, the for with view performance analyzer. We start recording, refresh it, and then we grab the entire query. As usual, I always like to simplify those a bit. So we do have top end, uh, all this stuff is useless, and just evaluate. Among the question, Vanessa says that this measure works, but it's uh, slow. So we can enable server timings and query plan just to take a look at how this query is going to be resolved. We run it. 
we do have the result but that's not important the server time is gonna be super fast because the database is really really tiny nonetheless uh, you see that we have uh, quite a lot of formula engine and a good number of storage engine queries uh, these are not likely to be very complex uh, but still there are several of them and the query plan is not well it goes from line 1 to line 114 so it's not the simplest query plan that you need to analyze and worse you see that uh, it analyzes quite a large number of rows 815,000 rows are being scanned to perform some cross apply that is not a very large number but performance is not going to be great and besides it's also useful to take a look at the matrix of this model because that should be tiny you see that the product table contains a thousand a thousand rows the customer table a thousand rows sales contains a thousand rows so there should be no reason to scan around a million rows to answer any query the problem is likely to be here in the cross join so we do not want to use that code we want to obtain the same result that we have here but with simpler code so let's start doing that uh, I also need here to define the full measure so we will be able to modify that sales with target we go at the beginning and define the measure now it's no longer gonna be easy to read this is the definition of the measure and uh, the query that use that runs it I'm going to change this measure but because the complexity of this measure is all in this calculate table I'm going to work on that I want to write this calculate table in a simpler way so that it's going to be faster and we have the same code here let's take a look at the result if I execute it I obtain the product key the customer key the target and the sales now there are some details that are worth investigated first of all we are checking for both the sales value and the target and that is happening in two filters one is here checking for the target and the other one is here checking for the sales value there's no point in having two filters we can simply use an end condition between those two get rid of this parenthesis form of the code and if I run the code I now have only one filter with an end condition nothing is gonna change in the result then I can note that in the original measure what I'm computing is the sales value so because I'm computing the sales value what's the point in checking whether the sales value is greater than zero if sales value is equal to zero this sales value will just return zero or a blank therefore this check for the sales value is basically useless because I'm computing the value of uh, <clears throat> uh, the sales value itself so we can actually get rid of this part only check for the target and again nothing is gonna change and because I no longer need sales I can also get rid of its calculation so I run it and still I obtain the same result but I'm not simplifying enough what I want to do is an another step I want to get rid of this cross join and the condition target greater than zero now if you think about that this query is basically building a cross join of product and customer and then it is only filtering the rows where there is a value in target but there's no need to do that because I can simply scan the target table and group it by the columns that I want so instead of using cross join that builds combination of product and customer that actually do not appear in target I can use summarize here I summarize target by product SQ and customer key summarize performs grouping by therefore it only returns the existing combinations if I run it again nothing is gonna change in the result and finally I'm checking for target to be greater than zero but the thing is if I have a row where that target is zero I can just avoid storing the row at all in the table so I don't need to check for the target 
greater than zero, I can just check for the existence of the row. I can do that provided that there are no rows in the target table that contain zero for the target. We can check it very quickly. We filter target where the target target is equal to zero. Oh, to zero. And you see, there's nothing. There are no rows in target that contain a blank row or a zero. Therefore, there's no point in checking for target greater than zero, and there's no point to use this filter. Let's format it again. This version of the code is still equivalent to the previous one, but I'm no longer checking with filter. And because I don't need target, I can just get rid of this calculation and get rid of add columns. Now I broke the code. Let's see if it was just a parenthesis. It is. And this calculate table. Again, it's useless. At the end, all what I needed to do is was just a scanning target, producing the retailer SKU and the customer key that are needed for the filter. Finally, what am I doing by retail SQ? I don't know if this is the key of the table or not, but we can check it. Let's go on the diagram view and the relationship between target and product is actually based on the product key, not on retail SQ. So there's no need to, use, to group it by a string. I can use product, product key. This is likely not to change performance at all, but it's only to have a table that contains the product and the customer. Now, why is this table useful? Let me go back to the whiteboard. If I still have it here, yes. Uh, let me clear everything. Oh, I also have eraser ink. What I do is uh, start from uh, target, I use summarize to retrieve all the combinations of customer and product that are reachable through target. Now, when I place this table, a table containing customer and product on the filter context, the net effect is because of the relationship, the table is going to filter sales. So I can now use this table as a filter in Calculate exactly as I did before. I can just take this summarize target go here and I basically can read off can get rid of everything here and just replace it with my summarize let's format the code and make it a bit simpler because we do not need this variable and we do not need the return part so we can format it again and now this version of the code is uh, shorter not only it's shorter the most important part is that it's telling the engine the DAX optimizer it, DAX optimizer exactly what to do. We can run the query, uh, look at the result, we have some values. It's always useful to check whether uh, the numbers are still correct. So let me rename these uh, sales with target new and then we return in the same query both sales with target and sales with target new. just to check that the values here are the same and looks like they are identical with the difference that now the code should be faster uh, we can get rid of sales with target now we're only interested in sales with target new let's run it and server timings uh, is uh, way better you see that before we had a lot of queries now we have only two queries and if we look at the query plan before we had an iteration that was running on around a million rows now this iteration is gone we have a thousand rows 364 rows and that's it so even though from the uh, performance point of view there are no differences because we are talking about six seven ten milliseconds nothing that can be measured actually this version of the measure is way better so i can just now copy the code Okay, copy the code, go in DAX Studio, and just go in my sales with target measure, get rid of all this stuff, and replace it with a much simpler version of the code. 
and that's it. Problem solved. This version of the code is going to be faster, better, and uh, work in a seamless way. Let's go back to conclusions now. As you have seen, with DAX, um, you quite never have to write complex DAX code. The first version that Vanessa wrote was not bad at all. It was just a bit naive. It was using a filter and then conditions in order to build a table that acts as a filter. You can obtain the goal that way, but the more complex your code is, the harder it will be for the optimizer to generate an optimal query plan. If you stick to simpler DAX code, the optimizer will be happy, find a better way to express your code and field a good query plan, and at the end, your DAX code will be easier. Enjoy DAX!